Maria Lizette Namath was born in Peru on April 21st, 1984. She was described as a soft-spoken, private, pleasant young lady who enjoyed photography and hiking. At the time of our story, she was 31 years old and living in Sunrise, Florida with her boyfriend, 24-year-old Fidel Lopez, who was born in Havana, Cuba. Like many Cuban Americans in South Florida, Fidel and his twin brother immigrated to the United States at age 16 for a better life. His parents were deeply religious and worked nights at a Walmart, and the family shared a home near the Everglades. The couple had been dating for approximately a year. On the evening of September 19, 2015, the two had dinner and drinks to celebrate one week of living together in their new place. Maria had prepared chicken, rice, and beans before the pair took off to share the meal with Fidel's mother in Miami. Some sources indicate the couple had met at a nightclub, while others indicate the two met through Maria's work. Maria had just gotten out of an eight-year marriage with a man named Norbert Namath. The two had tied the knot when Maria was 22 years old and later divorced in 2014. At the time, Fidel had been living with the mother of his two children, but by all accounts, they had hit it off. The pair began dating and moved in together. First, they lived in an apartment in Hollywood, Florida. Later, they moved in with Fidel's family before settling into apartment 308 at the Colonnade Residences in Sunrise, where Maria worked as a manager. According to official documents, Fidel worked as a mechanic at the nearby 595 truck stop in Davie. On the way home, the couple stopped at their local Chili's for margaritas before stopping by ABC Fine Wine and Spirits for a bottle of tequila. As the apartment had yet to be furnished, the couple sat at a makeshift table fashioned together with cardboard moving boxes where they took shots of 1800 with lime wedges. As the pair listened to music from one of their cell phones, they proceeded to down a half a bottle of booze. A verbal argument ensued sometime in the evening, but the two quickly made up. It's unclear what it was about, but according to Fidel, Maria had mentioned moving back to Peru to be with her mother. He also claimed that Maria began asking him to perform acts on her that he was concerned she had done with her ex-husband in their marriage. Later, the couple wound up in their bedroom walk-in closet where things became intimate. In the throes of passion, an inebriated Maria allegedly called out her ex-husband's name twice, which sent Fidel into a blind rage. The man started thrashing about the apartment, destroying everything that crossed his path. He broke various items, including a laptop, he punched holes in the drywall, he ripped the closet door from its hinges, and then managed to shatter their sliding glass door. During the commotion, Maria had passed out from drinking too much tequila and was lying on the closet floor. Unfortunately, the young woman became the next object of Fidel's ire. He grabbed various items, including a beer bottle and a flat iron, and proceeded to violently insert them inside of Maria. Then he inserted both of his fists inside of her openings. There is speculation that a flashlight and a hanger could have also been used. This was not enough for him. By his own admission, he inserted his hand and arm up to his elbow, causing Maria to bleed. He claimed that Maria had drank so much tequila that she couldn't resist him. Fidel stated that he turned into a monster, and after what he did next, the term monster is a gross understatement. Fidel continued to violate Maria by ripping away at her insides, and pulling them outside of her body. This included her intestines, along with various other tissue inside of her. Maria had been violently disemboweled by his hands. According to Fidel, he carried her to the bathroom to splash water on her face. Maria supposedly never regained consciousness, but I find that fact difficult to believe after what her body endured unless it went into shock, which I sincerely hope it did. After he finished, Fidel went outside to smoke a cigarette on the back porch, walking through shards of broken glass in the process. It was then that he panicked and, in his words, used items to cover up the bloody tissue. He then went into the bathroom to check on Maria, who at this point had stopped breathing. It was then that he decided to call 911. 911, what is your emergency? Hello? I don't know how she went to the bathroom or what I went to. 
Officers with the Sunrise Police Department, along with paramedics from Rescue 92, arrived at 1630 Northwest 128th Drive around 3.39 a.m. on September 20th. Upon entry into the apartment, first responders found Fidel crying, standing over Maria's unclothed and bloody body, asking for help. The officers noticed a large amount of blood on the floor and destruction throughout the apartment, indicating signs of foul play. Maria herself was lying in a massive pool of blood. They also noted the presence of what appeared to be several chunks of bloody tissue on the closet floor. Paramedics checked for signs of life, but unfortunately, Maria was already gone. She was pronounced dead at 4.02 a.m. She had died from blood loss due to evisceration by the person who was supposed to care for her. According to the medical examiner, she suffered blunt force trauma to the back of the head and was covered in cuts and bruises, both inside of her body and outside. She had defensive wounds, which indicated that she must have been conscious for at least some of the attack. She had a three-inch gash in her private areas. Much like we discussed with the Amora Bain Carson case on our main channel, the medical examiner could not tell the difference between her orifices due to the extensive trauma that Maria had suffered. It was just one orifice, and Maria was missing over 13 feet of her small intestines. Fidel was taken in for questioning while investigators secured the crime scene. Meanwhile, the neighbors residing in apartment 307 came forward, stating they heard a man screaming and heard loud banging for about two hours. A man walking in the parking lot also heard a woman screaming. Allegedly, there was so much commotion that the downstairs neighbor thought their light fixture would fall from the ceiling. Nevertheless, there is no information in the official documents that suggest that any of these neighbors called for help despite all the things that they heard. While being interrogated, Fidel initially told police that Maria had wanted him to insert the objects and his arm inside of her, as they liked to be rough in the bedroom by his own claim. He also claimed that she liked it, but he couldn't finish because he was disgusted by all of the blood. Yes, he painted this as this was all Maria's idea. After they were done, he stated Maria went into the bathroom to throw up. He found her a few minutes later having a hard time breathing. It was then that he called 911 and attempted CPR. Throughout the interrogation, Fidel kept changing his story and often didn't know the answers to what investigators were asking him and claimed that he was too drunk to remember. The following interrogation footage you're about to see was provided to us by our friend Johnny from the channel Morbid Curiosity, 
He did excellent work fixing the audio and subtitling it. Please check out his channel. He goes above and beyond with his videos. If you're into interrogation footage, he is one of the best on YouTube. Huge, huge thank you to Morbid Curiosity, and let's continue. When you first went into the bathroom and you saw her, she was breathing. She was breathing. She was conscious. All right. She was like, <gasps> and that's what I called 911. And okay. where was she in the bathroom again? She was like uh, in the toilet, be, between the toilet and the and the and the shower. The the, the, the okay. The is thing. is it a is it a shower or a bathtub? Uh, yeah, the uh, bath. So uh, it's not like, just like a, like, a, like, a, like a jacuzzi. Like, okay, you know. so it's not a, just a stand up shower. No, you want to no. take a bath, you could take a bath in it. Exactly, exactly. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know how to say that. No, no, that's yeah, okay. Yeah. It's it's okay. Like, like a, was she in the tub? No. I was, I was trying to put her there, but I couldn't lift her up. I, mean, I was strong. And I don't want her to hit her head or hit something or something. You right, know? right, sure. You know? And, and but the last thing I do is just put some cold water on her face. I open the shower. Okay. I put some cold water on her face to see if she reacts and I start, hey, baby, you okay, baby, you okay? I start screaming like a motherfucker and nobody here, you know? I don't know, neighbors might be here, might be hearing me scream. Okay. I was screaming for, for help. Right. Is that what you were screaming is help? Yeah, I was screaming for help, man. Screaming anything else? No, man. I was just, baby, why you do this to me, baby? Wake up, baby. Help, 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 right. you know, because I don't know the address. Sure. I call 911 and tell them, hey, reach my number or something. I don't know how do you guys work. I mean, like, I know you guys could have the system, you know, where the call come from, but, you right. know. So when you, you you say that you, you dialed 911 the first time and you're you're screaming okay. during that time. Okay, I was, uh, uh, what? Were you screaming, you called 911 the first time? I called 911 the first time. Yep. Okay. Did you when, actually speak to somebody? I speak to somebody. Okay. I All spoke right. to somebody, but uh, she was asking me, where are you? They are just, you know, I was so nervous that I just took the phone. May I also want to throw the phone away and put it away then. Stop, baby, and scream at her because I was so nervous and I, had, I really don't have the patience to deal with the address that I don't know. Where. Yeah, don't I know my where. girl is dying right there, man. You know what it is? Uh, you know, and when I was going to call for second time, that I find the phone, I went outside and I see the police and everything. Okay. You know, but it's, that's, that's what happened, man. Okay, so let's, let's go in a little more detail about from when you guys start drinking and, and becomes active to when she ends up in the bathroom. Okay. Okay, we need to talk about that time. Okay. okay. Um, what kind of sex did you perform tonight? She was, you know, I, I was strong. She was strong. She was telling me for me to do stuff that I've never done before with nobody, especially with her. Okay. And, you know, I know it might be a little embarrassing. Or you might no, want no to, more, you, but listen, I want, I, you, need to do. I want you to tell me what kind of things. Because you're was, saying she's asking you to do things. I want you to explain. She want me to put my, you know, my arm on her. And, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, like a open mind and here I said, I don't know. Okay, and what, what type of things did you do? I know she's asking you, what did you actually do? Everything she told me to do, I do it. Okay. Which is what? What did she ask you to do? I put my arm in her, uh, I put my, I, I believe I got the bottle. It was a, it was a small bottle, it was a, like a beer bottle or something like that, that she wanted me to put there too. You know, I just try to make her happy, mm -hmm. whatever. I understand. But she was concerned. She was not. She she wasn't like knock out or something like that. I would never do that to my girl. Knock okay. out. You know, okay. that that's not me, man. That's not me. But once we're when we do the thing with the arm, that was the last thing. She she was telling me I need to throw up. I don't feel good or something like that. Where and where then, did this take place? Huh? Where was this when that happened? In the bathroom. You were in the bathroom. Yeah, we start. We start from 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 the from the like. I think we start in the in the in the closet. I don't remember pretty well, but we were in the closet too, man. You know. Okay, so let's we go step by from. step. You guys start. Yeah, you said you had some boxes and you set up like a little area. Listen, 
and playing some music. I know where, I know where it has, I know I put my arm in there, I know I put a bottle, but to be honest with you, details, details, this is like that, I cannot tell you, man. I was drunk just like her. Okay. I was drunk just like her. You know, I would love to tell you every details. You know, and I'm I'm doing my best right now. I understand. I understand. You know? We just want to make sure that we we have everything that occurred and happened, so that when we look at her, we can understand what what we got. Okay, that's all. And you know, what I know last last thing is when she told me get out of the bathroom, we were in the bathroom, okay. but I know we went to the closet too. I don't remember when or where. Uh, how? But we went to the closet. We, we, we were all around. Like, what, what, what was going on in the closet? Uh, same thing. And uh, I believe the bottle thing is starts there or something like that. What What other kind of things did you put inside her? This is the bottle, my arm, my. You know, that's it. That, that thing. You know, that's it. She was. She was crazy, man. And I was crazy too when we walk, we walk for drunk. I mean, like. You know, I like she likes. Sure, there's nothing wrong with that. And when girls get drunk and I get drunk, I mean, like, uh, whatever well, comes Listen, you're drunk, talking to two grown men. We understand. Mm -hmm. You know how it is, man. Um, I take the responsibility for every hole and everything broken there. I did it. I know I did it. She she never do that. Okay. I know and, I did and, it. And why did you do it? The, you know, that's the problem. I don't know why, man. We were drinking. I don't know why. That's, that's the problem. I'm, I'm trying to. To make up in my mind, why did I do that? Mm -hmm. When I do that, it's because I'm pissed. You okay. know? And but why? I don't know what makes me pissed. Well, maybe she was talking about her her ex uh, husband or something, or something like that. Because okay. we, we, that makes I sense. Know, you know, I remember today that she was, she was mentioning him about something. Like what? Uh, I don't. Yeah, uh, she was. Uh, uh, somebody from her family don't like him or something. Just don't mention him like a, like a good thing, you know, just something like a bad thing, but still mention him. But I don't think that's a reason why I get mad. I get mad for something else. I don't remember whatever I break or whatever I do. You, do, you get, do you get upset when she brings up her husband or brings up past relationships? Uh, not really, man. You know, like, she never does that. She knows that. She never does that. I mean, like, she never talk about her. It's, she knows he's a mother. For I mean, between you and I, yeah, she knows that he's not a good guy. So she never, she never put him in conversation, things like that. No. So I never get mad because of that. Today she mentioned him, but because of somebody of her family don't like him. That's all. So I don't get, you know, mad because of that. I don't know why I break the door. Did you, during your argument or into when you were upset tonight, do you remember punching her? No, man. With her or anything no. like that? No, man. Okay. Have you ever punched her, hit her, or struck her no. in the past? No. Nothing physical? Nothing. Nothing. We just argument. That's it. Okay. That's it. What about, has she ever been physical towards you? No. Did she struck you, no. punch you? No, anything man. tonight? She's not like that. She's not like Nothing that. tonight? Well, not tonight. One day, she just hit me in my face three times because I told her. Uh, she said, I'm going to slap your face. And I'm going to do it. And she was wrong, also. And she did it three times hard. But that's when, it. when was that? Oh, we were living on uh, Hollywood Bridge. Okay. Uh, Russell Street. What, what did you do when she slapped you? Nothing. <laughs> it just stayed, okay, tomorrow I'm going to remind you of this. Were you drunk too at that time? No. <laughs> I was sober, also. I was sober. I was, you know, she drank at the same um, as a, at the same level I drank. So, but you know, I can handle it because I'm, you know, I'm, I got big body, man, and she's small. She get drunk faster than me. Right. <laughs> Way faster. You know, but never, never. She never touched me. Never touched her. Yeah. And you know, I don't. You know, I'm a man, man. I don't. I don't hit no woman. Okay. That's, but you, you, is. but you do get upset. I get upset, but it doesn't mean that I can. You know, I'm poor with her and he hit my girl or any girl. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like that. I mean, my family raised me really good about that. Okay. So my, my thing is, is if you remember kind of making up and having what was the argument about? What, what got you so enraged That's that you destroyed the house? That's what I don't remember, man. You know, I know we had this, 
I know I did the, those dirty things, and I know this because I never did this before. And it's a that sh is in my mind right now. So the bottle, the beer bottle, you put the beer bottle inside of her? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. That was first that I put my arm. Before or after? If, uh, that, that was before I put my arm. Okay. Then when I put the beer bottle, then she told me I put your arm. Did anything else between the beer bottle and your arm? I know that I remember right now. Man. I mean... How did you put the beer bottle in? Put it in. I mean, but how? Just did you put the part that you drink out of, you put that in, or you put the bottom in? I mean, what did you put in? I really, I really don't remember, man. I mean, like, I just put the bottle. I know do you I remember, used the bottle. Do you remember taking the beer bottle out? Yeah, man. Of course. Okay. <laughs> I ain't gonna leave it there, man. I took him out. I took him out. Did you put the whole beer bottle in? Yeah. I, the I whole did. bottle? She was asking for it, man. You know, I did it. Okay. I did it. All right. And then, then, beer bottle... Then what's next? The, I think I used my between the beer, beer bottle. I didn't came at all because it really, uh, there was blood. Once I, you know, with the beer bottle, it was blood, man. I mean, I hate blood. So the, the beer bottle caused her to bleed? I think so. Did the beer bottle break? No. No. Not that I, not that I know. It didn't break at all? No, that I know. There was, I mean, do you remember, was there any sharp, was there any, you know, if, it, if a piece of it broke, it's a glass bottle? Yeah, it's a glass bottle. I'm, I'm asking, is it? Yeah, yeah you're asking me. But it, it, so if it wasn't cracked, it shouldn't be sharp, right? Shouldn't be what? It shouldn't be sharp, like it will cut you. If it's not broken, it I shouldn't know, be sharp. It shouldn't be cold. Right. But remember, man, we're talking about a bottle that didn't speak. Right. So as soon as you took the bottle out, she started bleeding. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That was blood. I know it was blood. And where was this at when this was happening? That was... Those were in the closet, trying, trying to move to the to the bathroom. Man. I really, you know, it was crazy, man. Everything was crazy. Everything was that just together, the, the, the break, the door, everything was. Was she was, was she standing was up? One woman, man. Right. And was I was she, drunk too, man. Was she standing up? Was she up and like walking? No, she was like a uh, four four point position. She like was, on her hands and knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you were going to have to their doggy style from behind? Exactly. Exactly. And I don't know if we did it from behind. I really don't remember. I think so, too. So, okay. how did she get from the closet to the bathroom? Walking. Oh, so she did walk. Yeah, she did walk. And she was she was wrong, but she was okay. But she was bleeding from the closet. She started bleeding in the closet. I don't know if she started bleeding in the closet. I know I see blood. I see blood. I didn't realize, but when I see my hand, it was blood. Okay. She, okay. Fine. She wasn't menstruating. She didn't, was, did. She have a period? No, she don't. I mean, she had period like two weeks ago. So it's not possible. And not pregnant at all. Too. I mean, like. How, I do, you, know. how do you know she's not pregnant? Oh, I don't know that. Uh, did she was? No, I don't know. I'm asking you. I don't know. I don't, I don't think she was. You said that because I'm always I never some inside of her. You know, I'm always you know okay. use protection and you know. No, I, I know make the same mistake twice. So. Okay. I, I already did twice, and no more, man. Yeah. We were ready to do one, but wait, you know, in the future. So you don't, you don't think she was pregnant? I don't think so. I never have her. Never. 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 Now, the, there's blood. There's a lot of damage that's in the house. There's a lot of things. Is there anything else besides the beer bottle? In the closet that you put inside of her. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of items on the floor. A lot of items like what? You tell me and I tell you if I did it or not. Um, because man, I, I really don't remember, man. I remember the flashlight. Beer bottle. There's like a, a flashlight. Light. There's some kind of like a flashlight. There's um, there's a, a flat iron. A, like girl you, a, a long thin flat iron girl that you women use for their hair. Oh, it's yeah, flat, yeah, the, the like thing. a curler. Maybe. Maybe. Did she ask me for the beer bottle, everything similar to that thing? Maybe. Um, you know, no, the, I remember for sure my arm and the beer bottle. Okay. Besides that, if you just find anything, maybe. What, maybe. About a, what about a coat hanger? A what? Like a coat hanger, or a, you know, that you hang clothes with? Uh, I don't think so. No. Anything that would have like a hook or a sharp that something caused her to bleed. Something cut her. Before last night, what is the kinkiest or craziest things, Julie, you two have ever done before last night? 69. 
Sixty-nine. That's okay. it. Nothing else on that. I didn't So you went from pretty, vani- pretty vanilla, pretty tame, like like not doing too much, not doing too much, not nothing normal. crazy, just normal, not, normal, right? Normal. Right. normal you normal said not even movies to watch. No movies. Okay, right, so yeah. normal. Normal stuff. To way over here, where now she wants a beer bottle. And, and bottle, your fist inside of her. And all that sh- I don't know why she was telling me that for she, because she was drunk or I don't know why. Well, I mean, had you ever had sex with her prior to her? I mean, last night. Was last night the first time you two had sex while she was drunk? No, man, no. We had done it before, okay, so, but, but last night she was drunk, drunk, drunk. You know? Okay. You know, it was a, we both were drunk, very drunk. But you've had sex with her prior to last night where you both have been drunk, right? We had before drunk, right? But no, like but drunk. She, but she's never, she, but she's know. never asked you to do anything like this. Uh, no, she just uh, put her on you know, my, you know, my, my, my mouth. Some, you know, normal thing. And uh, I know it was she be would, did, at any time did she say that it hurt or she was in pain or anything like that? Man, I just I was asking her, baby, doesn't hurt you? And she was telling him, no, keep doing it. It's just like. You know, had, the, the language and the had, drunk language. It had to hurt a little bit. I know, man. I know. I, I know. Completely understand that. But you, you, you just want me to keep doing it. I, do, I keep doing it. I keep doing it. I keep doing it. It hurts. You know what? I don't have a... I don't know about you, but having your internal organs torn from your body and thrown about the room doesn't even sound like a consensual act, regardless of your proclivities. Yes. All right. I just got off the phone with our uh, crime scene and the medical examiner is there. Okay. The doctor. And there's the injury to her is severe. Severe injuries. Severe injuries. Severe injuries. Yes. Um, multiple injuries inside there, tissue ripped out. What is that? Tissue inside, all the insides out on the floor. What else? That's the cause of the death? Yeah, we think. You know the amount of blood that's in there? Her insides were ripped out. What happened there? You know, this is not a case of just rough sex. Yeah. Okay. This is not a case of rough sex. Uh, There's blood everywhere. No, 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 no. Everywhere. Listen, listen, just tell us. I'm do, you know, I'm just yes. doing whatever she was telling me to do. She wasn't man. telling you to do that. Because oh, that's, yeah. listen, Fidel, the amount of pain that she would have been in would have been unbearable. Okay. The amount the doctor just looked inside of her and the amount of pain that she would have had, she wouldn't have been able to withstand it. I don't, I don't kill her, man. I don't. We didn't say you, we we're not saying you intended to. No one's saying you intended to do it. No one's saying you, you I, wanted to. I, I, I hear, I, I hear I your remorse. Yeah, Listen, I, I heard the remorse in your, in your voice when, when you're, you're trying to get help, and I understand that you care for her, and this is someone that you love. I don't care. But man. however, there's injuries inside of her that need to be explained. She, she was telling me whatever the, the, what I was doing. She, Tell Listen, me, do it this, do it, man. She was telling me. I she understand, was but that's telling me. that. Listen, you as a human being, you as someone that loves this girl, would not be doing that to her, even if she was asking you. We both were it's, drunk, man. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. That doesn't make a difference in this situation. Okay, there's serious injury to her. There's things that were done in in there. And I think you have a little bit of a conscience, and you were worried. You were you were worried because you, you even cleaned the blood off yourself. Okay. And hey, listen. Look, you're not. You're, you love this girl. Okay? I love her, man. Of this course. Is some, and so I know what happened in there is not something that you expected to happen. Okay. It just things got things went wrong. Things went bad. But it's important for you to be honest about it and tell us Mom, the truth my, because I, I know I know you're saying that you put your arm inside of her I know you're saying that you put bottles inside of her and everything else but there's more to it there's more to this story there's more to the story and if you really love and care for this girl and you have a heart you'll tell us what happened so that we can have some closure for her 
Because, listen, listen, there's more to the story than what you're telling us, and there's more that you remember, okay? I know you're saying you don't, but you remember ex specific details here and here, but the, the part in the middle, you're blocking out because it hurts you. The fact that that happened, it hurts you that that, that occurred. It's got to be bothering you. I, I Listen, what what they, I just saw pictures, and I'm going to show you some pictures in a little bit, okay? And show you what I just saw. It's devastating. And to do the right thing for her, and the right thing for yourself, and the right thing for her family. I do the right thing, whatever I do, I do it. The right thing is to tell us what happened. I told you Tell everything. us the truth of what happened. i tell you the truth. i tell you everything, what happened. Everything that I remember, that's what I told you. But there's more that you remember. No, I don't remember. You're blocking anything. it out, but there's more that you remember. It's not that I'm blocking it out. Fidel, do you? Let me ask you a question. What's that? Do you? Do you want to be looked at as an animal? A what? Do you want to be looked at as a monster? Of course. As not. someone who's careless? Of course not. Exactly. Because I don't think you're that person. I'm not that person. Okay. I have two kids so, and I have my job. But okay. So listen, that's what we're saying. I don't think you're a monster either. I don't think you intended for any of this to happen. Of course not. Okay, but but at some point, but you at got, some point, at some point, you got upset and you became enraged. And there's there's a point in that time when you when that happened, something something snapped, something upset you. No, nothing, man. Nothing. Because we just the damage playing. that you caused in that house, that house was not in that condition prior to all this going on. All of a sudden, now there's holes and everything is destroyed. She's got internal injuries that need to, that. You're saying is just caused from a bottle, and that's not the truth. Those injuries. That's not the truth. There's more that was up inside of her. There's more that was done, and there's no way she could have dealt with that pain without either being unconscious or telling you she to was, stop. She was. She was. She was talking to me. She was like, "Well, no, maybe, I'm like, maybe in your head you're thinking that, but nah. well, I know she might have been talking at the beginning, but there, there's some point in time when she's not <clears> conscious <throat> because <clears throat> what is what was taken out of her." It's impossible for When you. she was not conscious, when I came into the, the to the bathroom, she was not breathing. She was like, <clears throat> like this. That's the point that she was unconscious. But when we're doing the stuff, she was talking to me. She was telling me, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, Keep doing. Just let like this, this is not rough stuff, man. I told you that. This is not, this is, this is a lot more than rough stuff. No, I know. Okay, so if you know, explain to us. Tell us. I understand. Tell us. I did everything she told me to do. When I don't, I don't know. I what else did you put inside before. of her besides a beer bottle in your fist? What else? This and the bottle. What else? And then that thing that you said for the hair could be possible too. The flat the, iron? The, the thing for the hair. What else? Nothing else that I remember. What did, in the closet, at some point, stuff that's inside of her came out? And stuff of yeah, her, her stomach, was part of her body, part of her body tissue, is out inside the closet, on the ground. How's gonna, how can that be possible, man? You tell me. It's only possible. It's only possible by what was going on in there. I find it hard to believe that she got up and walked to the bathroom after she what happened to, to her bathroom. inside the closet. She walked to the bathroom. I mean, I'm surprised she didn't bleed out in the closet. She bleed? I, I no, like you. bleed out, like not be able to breathe and pass away in the closet from the amount of blood that she lost. No, she was in the bathroom. She, she, she was, she told me she wanted to throw up and when I did come you, back... Did you drag her to the bathroom? <clears throat> no, she was, she was normal. She was like... What do you mean normal? Like, like she could have been normal because her insides are on the floor. She was fed out. walking. Okay. Look, she was walking to the bathroom. When you put your hand inside of your fist, were you, I'm not trying to be funny when I do this, I'm asking, did you, were you doing this? Yeah. Okay. When you pulled your hand out, did you have anything in your hand? I don't know, blood, I guess. Anything else? Do you feel anything in your hand? No, that I remember, like, you know. Squishy, just, anything? Just, just blood, I mean, full of blood. I mean, no, oh, come on, man. I'm asking. No one's saying you intended hey, for this no, to happen. No, of course not. Exactly. That's why we're out. We're trying to. We're trying to figure this out. We have to explain to the doctor, and we have to explain to other people that are looking at this what happened. Okay. We have to explain how she got into this condition. Part of her insides, from her inside of her body, are on the floor in the closet. 
We're not saying you're a killer. Okay. No, I'm not. Because you're not a murderer. <laughs> you're not a killer. This is no, not no. you. Okay. No, no. But you have to be honest of what happened in there so that we can put the pieces together. Everything I've been telling you is everything I know. You but know, there's some things that you're leaving out. There's I'm some not things. There's now. some things that you're leaving out because you're afraid. You're afraid that it's going to make you, you. You think that it's going to make you look bad. It's going to make other people look at you bad. But you know what's going to happen? If you're not honest and tell us what actually occurred in that house, and we're trying to put all this together, that shows that maybe you know what? Maybe he is a bad person. Maybe he what is a cold-hearted killer. Maybe he doesn't love her. And I don't think that's you. Well, that's not me. It's not you. I know you, you. You have care and concern for this girl. All right. Do you love this girl? Of course, babe. Okay. Would you do anything to hurt her? Of course not. Okay. But you did. Right. And I'm not leaving anything out of this. But, but you did. You understand you. that you hurt her. Right now, I understand everything you told me. You but told you me knew, right now. But but you know you did because you saw the blood. Yeah, blood is not blood. normal. Blood from sex is not normal. That amount of blood is not normal. Okay. Did it, the injuries that were caused to her, she didn't do them to herself. Of course not. And there was no one else in the apartment. It was me. It was you. I know. Okay. I know that. So, explain to us how part of her insides, part of her inside of her body. Listen, why, why did you why did you wash your hands? Why did you wash Because I went outside to smoke a cigarette. Why? Yeah, but you cleaned up more than just... The, the amount of blood that's in that apartment, all over the walls and on the floor, you had a lot more blood than just side in your arm. You had a lot more blood than just on that right arm. No, you, you didn't taste me, man. I don't even have soap in my hand. It's just pull water and wash the hand. Where, where else was blood on your body? I don't know, just <clears> my <throat> hand. Maybe this one. But, both, but both this hands? one is the one I use. No, this one is the one I use. Your right arm? Yeah, this okay. one. But did you have blood on that on that arm? Maybe side? if I touch myself for you. What about your legs? The legs and the floor. Well, you had that blood in your legs because there's blood all over the floor. There's blood on the floor. That's yeah. what I have. That's what I have blood on my. Yeah, but you don't have really a lot of blood on your legs. Did you go into the shower and wash off? No. Because you said you put the shower on. To put water on her face because she wasn't breathing. It's when I called the police, the 911. What about a towel? Did you use a towel? I know. I don't use no towel. To towels, dry so off? To mm -hmm. wipe anything down? I don't think so. I don't know. No, it's important that you... you... I, I don't think so. Now that I remember, I don't use nothing. Man. I don't use no, no towels or, or something like that. So after, that when you, after you called 911 the first time and the phone went down, you say you dropped the phone, or you disconnected because they couldn't get the, the they couldn't get the address, correct? Yeah. Well, what did you do phone. from that point to when the police got there? Try to wake him up. Try to give her CPR or something. She wasn't breathing. She wasn't breathing. Okay. Not breathing at all. Did she ever ask for help? No. Her? No. She was a. <gasps> did she ever ask, tell you to stop, or that she was in pain or hurting? Never. She was talking. To, you know, like. Keep going, keep going. That's it. But she never told me stop. I don't know. I don't even know how from her body come out of there. Really don't know. I mean, like, well, listen. You see that, right? Yeah. All the way here. If you put your whole arm inside her, you were up inside her stomach. Correct. What the? Why? No, I mean, I'm just saying. You're think. Realistic. Yeah, you're you're yeah, putting your whole arm inside her. You're, where is your no. hand at that point? It's not in her anymore. Right? I understand. It's up inside her stomach. Well, why she didn't tell me to stop or something? We don't know. <clears throat> and the stuff, and, and the part of her body from the, from her insides that's on the floor, it's not. it wouldn't just fall out of her. It would have to be pulled out of her. I didn't pull anything. I mean, like... It, she was the one that told me put the bottle on me. I understand. She was the one that told me well, use your hand. I mean, of course, I, I wouldn't do it if she wouldn't told me that. Yeah, I know. I she never... said to put your hand, but you put your arm. Listen. Listen. You know, when you put your arm in someone and go up inside to their and inside their intestines, that's that's damaging. That's damaging. It's not sexual. That's torture. 
Is it possible that she passed out while you had your arm inside of her? No, she was awake. She was, she was, she was like, like, like having fun. Like, you know, like, like having fun. It's not like a, like a scream of pain or something. Like, it's just having fun. You know, like, that's how come I, that's how come I say, I don't, oh. But you have to do the right thing and tell I'm the truth. I'm doing the right thing, man. I'm you need to do the right thing and be honest. Remember. I know everything. You're, you're everything. saying that, everything that you remember, and I understand that. But I think there's more that you remember that you're not telling us. There's more that you're leaving out that you're not telling us. I'll never hurt her. I will never hurt her. Okay. Never do something to hurt her. You know, in killing her... I'm not saying you killed her. She, I mean, she, okay, but listen, listen, I mean, listen. Like, listen. There's a reason because she is dead because of whatever well, we did. But did you intend to do that? Of course not. Okay. Of course not. I wasn't okay. conscious, man. Okay. We, it's like we, a car accident. You get in a car accident. Someone dies. No, this is not a car accident. Well, I'm just no, saying he, it's an accident. This this was obvious. Was this? I mean, something. You either intended to kill her, or this was an accident. Of course not. Okay. So, if you guys were having sex and you accidentally did something to her that you didn't intend and she ended up dying from it, well, then that's an accident, right? I know, but... It's, but man, it's, but at, no, some man, point, man, at some no, point no. during this night, you saw the blood. You saw this. You saw that you I made a mistake. I saw the blood. Oh, my. You, but, you, but at that point, you knew you made a mistake. No, right? I, I made a mistake at this point. I, I knew I made a mistake. But, you, at that but you, point, you knew you made a mistake the, at that point when you're washing the bloods off the blood I know, it's arms. a blood. I just... I just washed the blood because I was going to smoke a cigarette. I know I had blood. I know I had it. I know I had the blood. Were you going to smoke a cigarette because you knew that it was over? No, man. I went to smoke the cigarette because she told me she was going to throw up to get out of the bathroom. Now, that's what she told me. That's what I get out of the bathroom. And when I go back, I see her without breathing. It's when I call 911. I'm not leaving anything behind, man. I'm telling you everything, everything, everything I remember, everything how it was. If it's something else, I'm sorry, I cannot tell you. The police didn't buy it either and kept pushing Fidel to tell the truth, which he eventually did. He told them, she changed my name. She called me the name of the other effing guy. She said it twice and she was wrong and she was confusing me with him. At that point, I get mad. I get really, really mad. So explain to us what took place that led up to it. You know, you don't want to remember, but I know you do remember. And it takes a man, a true man, to admit, okay, I fucked up, man, I made a mistake. I had no intention of killing her, I had no intention of doing it, but this is what happened. It takes a man to do that. It takes more of a man to admit when he's wrong, and it takes a man to cry. Be that man, be that person, because that's who you are. Mm, she was telling me she she going to Peru. She was she need to go to Peru because she she was missing her mother, and you know, and I'm not gonna be able to use the car to go to work, and you know, then she just start screaming at me and all that. I get stop punching the sh I really don't remember what I punched the sh you just tell me I know that because of that. Then then after that I don't know how, how we end them up in the class or whatever. I know we made peace. But when we were doing the uh, making love, she told me something that I really don't it just she she changed. My name, she called me the, the other f***ing name of the other guy. I didn't want to kill her. I know, I killed her. That's whatever I did with her was the reason. But she was asking me about the bottle. And she was asking me about the hand too. And maybe things go a little bit far because, you know, once she she's confusing me with the other one and she told me, to do stuff with her that I've never done before. I think that she might think that's, a, that's all the stuff that she does with the other one before. 
things go out of hands. I know that, you know, now I mean to go. I don't think you did. Now I mean to go. Fidel Lopez was arrested and held without bond in the Broward County Jail. He was charged with first degree homicide and two counts of sexual battery with a weapon or by force for the obscene acts that he committed on Maria's body, which ultimately resulted in her death. To escape the death penalty, which is alive and well in the state of Florida, he pled guilty to both charges in 2017. Before his sentencing, Fidel apologized through a translator to the victim's family. He said, quote, today I'm happy to fulfill this conviction. I know that what I did has to be paid, and I agree, I will pay with my life for the life I took. To Maria's family, I ask forgiveness, end quote. Maria's mother, who described him as a loving son, also apologized to Maria's family. She said, we'd like to apologize and say we are devastated too. Through a translator, Maria's father told the judge they remain devastated and have only Maria's memory to cling to. He said, and I quote, if I had to summarize the life of Maria, it would be very difficult to express it in a few lines. I just want to tell you all that she was and will continue to be a model of affection, effort, perseverance, and love of humanity, end quote. Fidel was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He's serving his sentence at the Calhoun Correctional Institution in Bluntsville, Florida. Many of our fellow creators that have covered Maria's case have seen a bizarre trend in their comment section. A flood of people defending Fidel and believing his story that this was all just some sort of freak accident. With all of the evidence that is readily available online, I find myself puzzled that anybody could come to that conclusion. In Mr. Black's case coverage on his YouTube channel, The Disturbing Truth, he mentions speaking with one of Fidel's ex-girlfriends from high school who wished to remain anonymous. The young woman claimed that Fidel had a short temper and liked to control what she wore. She wasn't allowed to wear leggings and Fidel would attempt to fight her male friends. The young woman confirmed that much like the incident that took Maria's life, Fidel liked to stick objects inside of her, including a candle, this clearly illustrates, in my opinion, that he's done things like this before, despite telling police otherwise. In all, the couple remained together for about a year before splitting up. If you want to learn more about this case, please check out Mr. Black from The Disturbing Truth, Annie Elise from 10 to Life, and our friend Johnny from Morbid Curiosity. Not only is it important to support our fellow creators, but it is essential to see different takes on similar cases. Lastly, if you are in a relationship with a violent partner, please seek help before it is too late. Please tell a friend or a family member or call a DV hotline. If you're in a non-life-threatening situation, our DMs are always open if you wanna talk. Help is available and your life matters.